This is Women Who Podcast. You were gifted with a voice. Now is the time to use it. Meet the women who podcast, hear their stories so you can be encouraged to turn your ideas into reality. What is justice? What is beauty? These are just two questions that this week's guest has asked her own guests. Gwendolyn Dolsky is the host of Good is in the Details podcast. She's a college professor who would use her commute to listen to podcasts, and now she has her own place on the platform. Through her podcast, she talks to a variety of different experts to dig deeper and ask philosophical questions that lead listeners to thinking more deeply. I hope through listening to this podcast, you're able to hear that it doesn't matter what your own background is. If you have a natural curiosity or an opinion to share, then there is space for you. This week, we have a professor. In the past, we've had personal trainers, mums and artists. And next week, we're going to hear from a bartender. Podcasting is not for the rich, the intellectuals, the most eloquent even. So if you're curious about what it takes to start a podcast, I have a free download that tells you the three things that you need. The link for that, along with everything else that we mention in this episode, is in the show notes. Now is the time to be speaking up, to use your voice for good, and to share what you know to be true so that others can rise with you. Without further ado, let's hear from Gwendolyn Dolsky. Welcome to the show, Gwendolyn. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So good is in the detail. How did you come up with a podcast? Like what was it that led you to putting a podcast out so many years ago? Yes. Well, I was listening to them. I have a lot of commute time in Southern California. And I just kept thinking, hey, I want to do this. And I'm a professor at Cal Poly Pomona. It's a university here in Southern California. And I have a lot of lovely conversations with my students. And I thought, you know, this could be work for a broader audience. And so that's where the origin came about. And I talked to a friend of mine who had some experience in podcasting. He's a lawyer by day and he was on board. And that's Rudy Salo, who's my co-producer and co-host the majority of the episodes. And he doesn't have an academic background, but that's actually what makes the show work is that between the two of us, We'll have experts on kind of dive into the deeper meaning behind people's professions and what is it, how does that lead us to understand what it means to live life well. And I have a philosophy lens and Rudy has a background in law. He also loves science fiction and film. So it works really nicely between the two of us and our guests for the episodes. I was going to ask you what you're a professor in, but is it philosophy? Yes, it's philosophy. I teach philosophy of sex and love. I teach existentialism and I'll teach ethical theory. So with that, you'll have an interesting lens on, I guess, a lot of subjects. I hope so. I try to. (laughs) I don't know if my students always think so, but yes, but I try to. I really, I mean, philosophy is my passion from when I was in undergrad in my first year of university. And I took a class in philosophy and I knew I just wanted to read more of it. I just fell in love with it. And that has really guided me in my academic journey and even in my podcasting journey is I think at the heart of philosophy, philosophy means love of wisdom, is really a way to enjoy your life is to be more thoughtful and more curious and learn more. And so the podcast is a way for Rudy and I to engage in that activity, to actually be curious and then to share that with a broader audience so that they can see the joy of learning something new. So one of my teachers when I was in high school, and this has always stuck with me, but she said, my job is to make sure that when you leave this classroom, you know more than when you walked in. And I used that as a guide for my own teaching. And I use that as a guide for podcasting. When the listener is done with the episode, Do they know more than when they started and enjoy the experience along the way, maybe even laugh a bit? You must have learned so much through all the episodes that you've done. Is there absolutely is there something that surprised you, like any of the experts that you've had on? I don't know um, if surprised would be the word. I think that it is 
first of all, it's very fulfilling. It's like a, it's an intellectual and also an emotional feeling. But I think one of the surprising things is that as the podcast gained momentum, we discovered that this is a platform to really elevate voices. And that is an absolute privilege to be part of where I have reached out to experts and said, hey, I read your work. I really love it. And then we have them on the show. And then guests have reached out and have bought the book of that person. And I, it is, I just feel extremely grateful to be part of promoting really good work and putting it out, out, in, the, out in the space for other people to enjoy. I'm, I'm on the same as you when it comes to learning. I mean, I'm a lifelong learner and find all kinds of things quite interesting, which makes <laughs> me even more curious. So shows yes. like your own, yeah, where you have different experts from all kinds of fields. It would be fascinating. Yes. Yes. We've had people from medicine. We had a plastic surgeon on and I was asking her, what is beauty? We had an FBI agent on and I asked him, what is justice? So it's really a lot of fun. We had a NASA engineer and I was asking her, what is the disposition of the engineer? How do you solve problems? And that is really what makes it fun is that, you know, I'm a bit of a bookworm and in academia, you can get locked into the world of only reading people in your field. And so it's a real exciting endeavor to talk to people who are experts in other fields and to learn about what makes them tick. And the joy of having your own podcast is that you can reach out to experts in areas where that you have that interest and, and have those conversations one-on-one -on -one rather than listening in your car or on your commute. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I can read a book now and say, I really love this. And, you know, pre-podcasting, maybe if they had a book signing, I could go and stand in line and quickly say hello and get a book signed. But now I can actually have an hour conversation with the author of a book that I really enjoyed. And that is extremely rewarding. What do you enjoy about podcasts in general? Like, What was it about podcasts that you listen to them on your drive? Oh, my goodness. So the first that I got hooked on was Serial. I think a lot of people got hooked on that. And then I like some political podcasts. I would like the mystery ones or where you're learning something new about science. And so I think, I, yeah, I actually even prefer them to audiobooks. There is something about listening in on the conversation. There's something about the realness of it. And also just walking away with feeling like you know something more that's really satisfying and enjoyable. What podcasts do you like to listen to yourself now? I to recommend. <laughs> well, there was there was a podcast that was I don't even know how to say it. It's like it's not enjoyable. It was eye opening and it was really astonishing. But it was at the top of the charts and it was called The Retrievals. And it was about a medical clinic where women were going in for IVF treatment and they were getting their egg retrievals and they were experiencing extraordinary amounts of pain. And it turns out that the reason was because they were sober for this procedure and a nurse had been stealing the fentanyl that would have been put, putting them under. So the whole podcast ended up being about how is when women are talking about pain and med how were they treated with that? What is the emotional aspect of fertility? And then also what about uh, drug abuse and how do you handle that? So that was at the top of the charts for a while, the retrievals, and I was totally hooked on it. I love podcasts that Wondery puts out. And as far as political podcasts, I'm a big fan of Crooked Media. They have a lot of great podcasts that's got some great political commentary. It's more left-leaning for anyone listening. I don't want you to tune into that thinking it's middle or center or anything like that. It's definitely more left-leaning, but I genuinely enjoy that content. Those both sound actually really quite interesting, especially retrievals and what you were saying about women and pain because mm -hmm. I mean you hear a lot of people saying I was dismissed by the doctor who didn't believe I was in this pain. I liked it so much that I have two friends who women who are in medicine and I asked for them to listen to it and then we just recently did a podcast episode where I've never done anything quite like this but kind of like a book club but saying like hey here are two women surgeons, what did you think of this? I mean, I knew what I thought about it as a philosophy professor. I'm thinking about concepts of justice. I'm thinking about 
some sociological aspects. But as physicians who are in that position, what did they think? So that was a really cool thing to do with the podcast is to be able to, you know, seek out the topics and the experts that I'm interested in to see where the conversation goes. Do you have a list of people that you would like to get on your show? Like a dream? Yes. Yes, I do. And what has been very exciting is that because Good is in the Details has gotten some momentum, that that dream list is starting to become actualized. So there is somebody I recently worked, I recently reached out to. I had read her collection of essays and I'm going to be interviewing her tomorrow. And I just thought, oh my goodness, I can't believe this. There was another author I reached out to. I have to say, this might, I know this is such a moonshot and sounds so corny, but I'm a big fan of Stephen Colbert. If I could ever interview him, although I'd probably be so nervous, but I would just want to know about, there's a lot to his character when I've seen him on other interviews. He's got this intense spiritual side. He has a serious side. And then on camera, he's silly. I absolutely love that. And I also really like Steve Martin. I feel the same way about him. I'm a big fan of his comedy. I read his memoir, and he's actually a very serious individual. All of his silly comedy has this strict guideline and outline that's extremely thoughtful. And I enjoy people like that, where the expression of their art, especially in comedy, actually comes from intense observation about the world and how they, how they create their work. They would both be awesome guests. Yeah, those are moonshots. Yeah. Oh, you might as well have them, though. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, you know what? Hey, I, I tell everyone that. I mean, I have reached out to people where I thought there's no way they're going to respond, and they do. And I've also learned, this would be, you know, for your listeners when they're wondering, how do you get the interviews? I've learned how to format that email. Let the person know how you encountered their work. Start out with that, how much you appreciate it. And then when I add, I have an educational podcast, a lot of times that gets people to be thinking about how they can contribute to the phenomenon of education. And so it works out that way. But the worst is that you don't hear from somebody or they say no, and you just move on. But don't, for anyone who's listening who wants to do an interview-based podcast, just go ahead and reach out. People are very kind and very willing to lend their voice. And one of the things you can do as a podcaster, I think, as an act of gratitude is to make sure that you edit that and package it and do a good job when it goes out. That's the best way to thank somebody for their time, I think. That's actually a really good tip about approaching your guests and showing that you how you have found them and given that gratitude towards them rather than going in from the, I have a podcast. Can you be a guest on my podcast? It's like creating yeah. that relationship first. Yeah, it, it needs to be, I mean, it needs to be sincere and go ahead and reach out to the people that you would just love to talk to and let them know why you would love to talk to them. How, why do you admire their work? What do you think is interesting? Or maybe even somebody who's controversial, maybe somebody who thinks differently from you and you think, I'd love to listen to what your point of view is and understand it. When you were starting your podcast, did you have to learn all the tech, like, what, what was the <laughs> hardest thing for you? The hardest thing for me. So from a philosophy background, I read and I still write with pen and paper. So to transition to something that feels very high tech, now I'm used to it. It doesn't feel like it, but it was very scary. And I just felt like a newborn. I watched so many YouTube videos. I used Audacity. I used Riverside FM. I would go on YouTube and say, how do you make a podcast? And I just watched so many videos and took notes. And eventually it worked out. Now it doesn't feel like anything difficult at all. So if anyone feels intimidated, YouTube, you can just type in any question and there is an explanation for it and you can get it. You can do it. I love YouTube for audacity. You go onto <laughs> YouTube and it's like, audacity, how to fade or, you know, how to do whatever you want to do in audacity. And there'll be a video for it. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, there's nothing that you can't learn, I don't think, when it comes to podcasting. You have to. I mean, there's just patience and that's it. And we're all on a learning curve. That's the thing with technology is that in every couple of years, we're all babies again, trying to start something 
new. There will be a new app, a new feature, a new social media platform, and we all have to start over and learn how to use it. And I think that that's why patience and just some grit is really helpful. Just say, like, I know I can do this. If you're getting frustrated, just step away for a second and then come back to it and you will figure it out. How can you see your podcast evolving over the next couple of years? You've been going since, what, 2019? So, you'd... yeah. I mean, I think what I would really like to do is just broaden the audience to a point. And I really want to be, in terms of education, I would really like for Good Is In The Details to be the place that when somebody has a book that they want to share, that they're like, I got to get on this podcast. I really want to be creating a space for the elevation of ideas and good conversation. And that's partly what I want to contribute through doing this. And, you know, at the same time, when Rudy and I were first figuring this all out, I was so tired. I couldn't figure out why am I sleeping so much? Something's wrong. Am I having caffeine withdrawals? And it turned out I was pregnant. And I thought, oh my goodness, I can't do this new thing and have a baby. What is going on? And it turns out that actually having my daughter was the, the boost that I didn't understand would be part of this. Having her has made me very much aware that I want to be an active participant in the world and making it a good place that she's going to be part of. So when I can bring people on to talk about ideas to exchange ideas. Because right now, everything seems like everyone's so divided. People are so hateful. They just don't feel connected. I don't want her to be in that world. So how can I contribute in a small way? And good as in the details is one of the ways that I do that. It's also for her. It's such a great legacy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm an older mom. I, I did not think that I was, I, didn't think I was going to have children. I didn't think that I could have children. And so she was definitely a surprise and a blessing. And it really has impacted me in ways that I didn't expect at all. And one of them is that I would like for her to be able to say, hey, that's my mom, right? Like that's, I, so when I move forward, I, I know that there's some podcasts or some content out there that can be really negative. There's some like super misogynistic content out there. And I think I don't ever want to air that out. Like, that's not the kind of energy that I ever want to bring into this world. And we are responsible for the creation of the world. And part of that is, you know, how you decide to direct your energy. Who do you want to engage with? And so good as in the details as it's grown has given me more of the opportunity to reach out and just make that a bigger and bigger space for great ideas. It's, yeah, it's such a wonderful whole project that you've got and yeah, bringing your daughter into it now as well, thinking ahead, use, being able to use her as an inspiration. Yeah, she certainly is. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything else that you'd like to share with listeners about the good is in the detail or anything else you've got planned? Well, I think something I would like to say just as tips for, you know, people who are out there podcasting. I think when it comes to an interview based podcast like we have, a lot of people, you know, they want to get the blue check mark names, the the big names of the giant social media accounts. And of course that is lovely. But one of our best episodes that still just brings, I mean, so much happiness, emotional, spiritual, intellectual satisfaction is an episode that we did with somebody who did not have any kind of social media presence or anything like that. And it was inspired by a former student of mine who is of Asian descent. And at the time of where there was rampant violence against Asian Americans, this um, former student of mine had talked about the, the terror of just walking outside and of her family and of being assaulted. And I contacted a friend that I knew in undergrad who went on to get his PhD and is a history professor in Asian American studies. And I reached out to him and said, hey, can we do an episode on what is Asian American studies? What, what is the history? What is the cultural impact? Let's learn about this. Now, like I said, no social media presence or anything like that. And he came on and it is one of our top out of 123 episodes. It's one of our top 10. And that episode meant so much to the former student who inspired it. 
And my students right now, when they listen to it, they, especially my students of Asian Amer- of Asian descent, it means so much to them. And I am just extremely grateful that I went the route of my gut of saying, wait, what is good content going in that direction? And it worked out and it has meant a lot, of, a lot to people. So when people are getting to podcasting, don't just chase the big names. What is the idea? What is the purpose? What is the why? And let that guide you. Thank you so much, Gwendolyn, for everything Thank that you. you've contributed today. You're such a great speaker and you can tell that you're used to teaching people because you've, you've taught me quite a few things. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity to talk about the podcast. It's, it's, it's a passion. It's a lot of fun. And I really appreciate you engaging with me to have me on your show. Cool. Thank you so much. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed listening to Gwendolyn as much as I did speaking with her. I've listened back to our interview a couple more times, and each time I take away something new. And since I recorded this interview with her, she shared an episode called Medical Ethics and Retrievals, where she brings on two doctors to talk about the podcast that she referenced. In the show notes, you can find a link to that episode, as well as to the episode, A Lesson in Asian American History. That's all from me. Please go and give Gwendolyn a listen and a five-star review, and review this podcast if you've not already. This month, I'm reading out a review I've received at the end of each episode to say thank you. Here's a recent review from Brocky Jean. I love this concept, a place where us fellow podcasters can go to learn, be inspired, feel in community. Absolutely brilliant. So glad I came across this podcast. Thank you, Brocky Jean. Go ahead and leave your own review and I may choose to read it on the show. See you all next week where we will hear from Brandy Kelly from the Sober Bartender podcast. So please join me then. You've been listening to Women Who Podcast, the podcast for women with something to say.